I've got an elk tag here in Montana as well, so we're just packing one gun. If we see a elk Tom will jump on the camera, if we see a buck, I'll be on the camera. Hopefully we can pull something out of here before Tom leaves for Colorado tomorrow. The snow, we got some elevation today and drove up. Snow's deep and a little bit sugary up here. But getting some of the deer moving. Spotted our first buck for the morning. seven degrees out cold so unfortunately i didn't find the buck i was looking for in montana by the time my colorado season opened as i was hunting in colorado travis spotted this giant buck in montana because he only had an elk tag all he could do is take video i received a message on my phone saying found your buck tom as soon as i filled my mule deer tag in colorado I headed back to Montana and searched for that big buck Travis saw. All right, just moving my way up to the other elevation. Um, Travis saw a really big buck in here while I was going to Colorado, so I'm back here looking for it. Hopefully you can find him. He's a big one. I'm convinced these rubs came from the very big buck that I was looking for, but with two-week-old crusty snow, it makes it very difficult to track anything. However, on the day before Thanksgiving, we got a fresh skiff of snow, so I decided to head back up there in hopes to cut his tracks. Travis came with to film. Going down. He's going down, Tom. You got him. You got him. 
there really? Yep, he's dead. Yeah. That's a big one. Is it? See him right to the left of that pine tree. Tom shot, the sun was really reflected on my screen, so I, think, I hope I got good video. But right there above that pine tree, it's the last place I saw him kick. We're gonna run down there just to make sure there's not a draw that he can slide out of. Last rub right there, he's made a rub going across this opening. Oh, dude, he's, he's big. He's big. Oh, oh. I knew. No, I That's the know. buck. You caught him. That's that buck, Trav. I see his sticker. That's him. You That's got him. Buck. I didn't have a tag and I saw this buck. Tom and I came up here and tracked him down. That's him. I that can't believe him. it. I can't believe we found him. We tracked him too. Tom, you killed the buck that we were after. Wow. <laughs> he did it again. Oh. That thing is bigger than I thought. He is a monster. But you did it. Was it was the right thing to track him. We were starting to question like you're tracking a rutten buck and he's moving a lot of can, a lot of changes and then he decided to bust out of his burn. Look at that. The last buck. That is a beauty, Tom. Wow. That is a huge buck. What a beautiful deer. <laughs> That's a dream, Tom. That is what we've been looking for. That is a big buck. Right after Tom, I, give me a pound. Right after I got back from Colorado, I immediately came up here. No buck, I saw just so many tracks. But we had a great snow last night and it was just enough to erase all the tracks, start fresh. Well, this right here is what you dream of, of a big timber buck. I always talk about big timber bucks. This is exactly what haunts my dreams right here. And I feel like I'm living a dream today. This is just an incredible deer. We've hunted, Travis and I both have actually hunted really hard in Montana. And he got his mule deer fairly early um, when the rut was just starting to kick in. Um, general tag, public land, um, steep country, really steep country. And I just knew this big buck was up here, but I knew it was just like, it was gonna be a tough challenge to find this buck again. To actually find this buck in timber country again is, my odds are not high. Um, well, this is the day before Thanksgiving and I decided to try it up here one last time. Travis decided to come up here too because the last time I was up here I saw elk tracks and we pretty much made it right to where Travis saw this big buck last. Uh, Travis, you say two weeks ago, was yeah, it? about two weeks ago. About two weeks ago, Travis saw this buck last and we cut a big buck track in the snow. Literally 200 yards. He was probably 50 yards, he walked 50 yards from where I was sitting when I watched him two weeks ago. And he was 200 yards from where he was. Yeah, for the But he came from another mountain. His track came from the bottom down by the creek and just went up through that. So it was like, wow. So we are, so it was just like, just timing was just perfect. The buck made his way back up to this mountain again from the other side, looking for does. And we just followed his track all day. We have fresh snow. It's, it sucks following a rutten buck, especially when he's not with does because he can move a lot of, a lot of ground. Uh, but I think one of the biggest things that saved us is he did bed down for a period of time. Fresh snow, he bedded down just right over here on this bench, on this timbered bench. And then we saw him get up out of his bed and he, we just couldn't believe it. When we saw his fresh track moving right out to this opening, we were both, our, our hearts were both racing. Travis just turned on the camera because he just like had a strong feeling that we're going to see this big buck out in the opening. And sure enough, right when I peel over, he's just standing there staring at me. So I just dropped to a knee and Trav even said, he's like, Tom, make sure you're steady. And he said, get a good rest. Yeah, get a good rest. And I was, I was resting on my knee at 200 yards and I'll be honest, my crossers were moving a little bit and I was, that was worried, that worried me a little bit. So I, one thing I usually do in this situation like that, I just took one big deep breath, exhaled and just let the crossers just hold on the deer and I pulled the trigger and the buck just started running down the hill. I mean, it wasn't that far, Trav. How far do you think he went till he just rolled? No, he only, yeah, maybe 50 yards if that. Yeah, 30. Trav saw him roll and I just couldn't believe it. You know, Trav's like, oh, he's rolled, he's dead right there. I'm like, no, I don't believe it, Trav. We need to get over there and make sure he's dead. And 
And we made it over here and sure enough, Trav's right. He's just sitting here, he's dead. Yeah, bring the camera up here and look at him. Just a big buck. Yeah, and the right is just heavy. Just heavy. I mean, look at the, turn this a little bit in the sun. Look at the base. I think I can't get my fingers around the, my, around the base of this thing. Nice eye guards. He just got done raking a tree. This is the third muley buck this gunrick rifle has killed in two weeks. So seven psalm. The seven psalm. I killed a buck at 880 yards. My buddy killed a buck at 760, and then I killed this beast at 200-ish. Yeah, real good shot. Bullet went in, about Hard the last angle. rib back, and came out the front shoulder. It just oh, that's it right there. Yeah, right there. And it, yeah, entered back here. Did right I there, hit right everything there. you wanted? Entered this deer is actually Exit. the skinniest mule deer buck I think I've ever seen. He's just rutted up so look at, hard. Look at the spine. It's His spine is protruding out the back. You start getting that late November. I had a buck like this a few years ago, very similar, where they just rut so hard. They're just like a skeleton. They just don't eat. They just rut. Yeah. Um, you may not taste the greatest, but that's what... That's why you make them in the Smokies. You make them in the Smokies. You're going to make Smokies, and that's and you about can make, it. You can make anything taste good in the Smokies. Just throw some beef fat in there, and boom. And thanks, Travis, for coming. And for, if Travis did not spot this buck, I would have never been up here. This this place, let me let me emphasize this place. This place sucks. <laughs> I have a cape and half the deer. Um, so I got the uh, a game bag with half the deer, the bone. And then I got the cape just set on top in the garbage bag. Um, and then as soon as we get down the mountain, we're going to lay everything out, cool it down. It's already cooled down as it is, just us working it up out here. But you don't want it too long in the garbage bag. Um, and some people are asked if we've ever had meat spoiled being in a garbage bag. We never have. So um, we just want to keep the pack clean. want to keep the meat clean. I'm going to use every buckle that I know that exists on this pack. Got him on there. The snow melted. And it's made things pretty slick on this in this mud. So as we continue to give you free content to watch, all we ask in return is to give us a like, subscribe, and hit the bell to stay updated on our newest hunting episodes. Thank you for watching. A little bit of a bushwhack, but not too bad. Today's a good day. <laughs>